Hello everyone, in this video I will be trying to make this Champion 2000 watt generator as quiet as my Honda EU 2200i. Now this Honda generator is a little bit more powerful and it is quieter than the Champion generator. It's not a lot quieter, but I will show you a pre-sound test of the Champion and the Honda to see how much it is from a couple of feet away all the way to 25 feet away by using a distance meter just to make sure that the distance is correct between both videos and it's accurate and I'll be using a decibel meter to measure the amount of noise coming from both generators from a couple of feet away to about 25 feet away and also after I add some sound deadening material into the champion generator we'll be able to see if it is indeed as quiet as the Honda. Now all you need is three decibels. Three decibels. If you can cut the noise down by three decibels, you've essentially cut it down by half of what we can hear. So just cutting it by three decibels is very significant. Now if we can only cut it by one or two decibels, it is still pretty significant if you think about that three decibel rules. So what we'll be using in this video is some pretty expensive sound deadening materials for vehicles, the Dynamat Extreme. Only reason I'm using this one is because that's what I have on hand. I'll have a link in the description below of this very material and I'll also add a link of just the Amazon basic sound deadening material because it is a lot cheaper than this and of course you won't need a huge box if you're just doing one generator. So another way to soundproof my generator is to use putty pads. So where you would typically see putty pads is if you have, let's say, an open wall where you can get behind an electrical outlet. We would wrap this around the electrical outlet to stop noise from going through the outlet. Typically, this was used mostly for fire prevention. If there was a fire that was starting inside the electrical outlet, it would contain the fire for a certain amount of time and it would make it so that the fire doesn't spread throughout the house as easily. But in the soundproofing world, if you wrap this around your electrical box, then you will notice that all of those holes that were there are now completely covered. And people wouldn't think that there's that much noise coming through electrical box. If you want more information about putty pads and soundproofing walls and electrical boxes video right up here i'll explain it all to you and you'll see that it makes a lot of sense to pay seven dollars for these little things to soundproof a wall that is driving you crazy now the champion generator is on your left it's a inverter generator 2000 watt it's a dual fuel generator now the dual fuel type for this one is gasoline and propane so you can power this generator by either using a propane tank or gasoline and they do sound a little bit different whether you're using propane or gasoline. So video at the corner of your screen will show you the difference in sound between propane and gasoline if you're in the market for a dual or tri-fuel generator. And this is of course the very popular Honda EU 2200i and since I live in a colder climate for about half of the year, that is why I got the cold climate technology generator. Now this one does not have the Bluetooth technology, but for what I'm using it for, I'd rather have the cold climate technology. If you're in the market for something like this, I'll have a link in the description below of these two very generators. All right, here we'll start up our Champion 2000 watt inverter generator. We have it on eco mode without a load for our first test and around five feet away, it gives us around 73 decibels. Now this generator right now is using the gasoline engine and not the propane section of the generator. So now you can see that standing 25 feet away, it's giving us around 58 decibels. And now we're going to rev up this small generator just so you can hear how it sounds when it's running on a load. Now 5 feet away, it's around 77 decibels. Now let's go boil some water so we can hear how much noise this generator makes 25 feet away on a load. And it's giving us between 62.5 to 63 decibels on a load. Alright, now let's try our Honda EU 2200i with no load 5 feet away. And it's giving us around 71 decibels, sometimes jumping to 72 decibels, but a little quieter than the Champion. And at 25 feet away, it is giving us around 57, 58 decibels, running on no load. Now we're going to boil some water. And 5 feet away, it's giving us 
around 73, 74 decibels running on a load. So at 25 feet away, the Honda is giving us around 62 decibels running on a load. So here we'll open the side, back and front panel of our generator to see what we have to deal with. Now in this one you'll see that there is a little bit of insulation on the panels itself. It's just cheap sound deadening insulation so we'll try to do something better with this. Now there are a few spaces inside that you can add a little bit of acoustic treatment. The only thing is do not put it on the engine or any components that tends to get very hot. If you're just not sure, just don't put any insulation there because it could cause a fire hazard and completely void your warranty. Okay, so here we'll just be opening the front plate of the generator just to make sure when pulling the section off that you're doing it very carefully to not yank any wires out because a lot of generators you don't have much room to play with like this one some generators you have a little bit more give but it's fine we have enough space to do exactly what we want to do and now we'll take the back plate off to see how much insulation we can actually install back there all right so here in the back of our generator there's not much to work with really there's not much that you can put on the generator in terms of sound deadening especially not on the exhaust itself you really want to keep it away from there but there is a little bit of insulation that you can add on this back plate as long as you're not restricting airflow and you're not covering any of those honeycomb holes. So here just looking inside our side panel, there is already some insulation on the interior of the generator. So here we'll just take a few measurements just to make sure that we have everything as tight as possible. And as I said earlier, if you are going to add some sound deadening material in front of something that gets hot, like the engine, make sure that your sound deadening material is heat resistant. And of course, make sure not to place it directly on the engine. So here we're doing the back of the generator and there's not that much insulation to add but we will be adding as much insulation as we can. What's nice with these two types of insulation that I'm adding, they are very thin. So you can add some where the thicker type of insulation will not work. But as I said, make sure to not cover those honeycomb holes to avoid restricting airflow. Now let's look at the front plate of the generator and see what we have to work with. Now we don't have that much room to work with, but there are a few spots in here that you can add some sound deadening material. Now I'm just going to be using the putty pad on this front panel because it is extremely pliable and I am just going to cover the plastic sections of the front electrical boxes. Now these boxes could be vibrating, giving us vibrational noises when it touches other pieces of plastics and the wires, so this could help making this generator a little bit quieter while it's running. Now that I've added insulation everywhere that I can, this is what it should look like with your dynamat and your putty pad. And as I said in the front, I've only used putty pads and I basically only covered the electrical boxes where the wires go in and out of. And now we're putting this generator back together to see if all of this sound deadening material did make a difference in making this generator quieter or as quiet at least as the Honda EU 2200i, which is more than double the price of this champion generator, which as I said, this one has dual fuel capabilities, which can be very useful for some people, especially if you're camping and have access to a propane tank. And now we're going to turn this generator back on with all of the added insulation to see if it indeed makes a difference. And of course, we will have this generator on eco mode, just like last time. So here, standing at the same distance as before, we are registering at 72 decibels, which is one full decibel than the last time before we added the insulation. So now standing 25 feet away with the insulation inside the generator without a load, we have around 57 decibels, which is again about one decibel lower than what we had before. And now we'll try it with a load and it's giving us around 75 decibels, 75 and a half decibels. So really it's about a drop of one and a half decibel, which is pretty significant. And at 25 feet away, it's giving us around 62, 63, which is close to what we had before, but it's keeping more into the 62. So we'll say about half a decibel lower. But one thing I do notice is that it sounds a little bit different than what it sounded before. It sounds a little more deadened. So even though on the decibel meter, it might be close to the same, to my ears, it does sound a little different than what it did before. Not by much, but just a little. And if you also have a generator that really rattles a lot, this type of insulation could make a huge difference. Let me know in the comment below if you've ever done any types of modifications to any of your generators, whether it's inverter or standard generators. Let me know what you did and how it worked out. I'd be really interested to know. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.